So, Katie, today we're going to highlight the Kennedy assassination. I'm going to give you some background, some of the real stuff that's out there. A lot of questions, so uh, feel free to ask. Uh, and for my viewers at home, uh, we're going to do a Zoom meeting tomorrow, so feel free to ask any questions on it as we go. So, um, we're going to first talk about this guy, Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, Oswald is a man who kills Kennedy. Oswald background, uh, 1959, Oswald is a U.S. Uh, Marine uh, soldier. Uh, he's a U.S. Marine and he is uh, being trained as a sharpshooter. He is a very good shot. There's a lot of rumors out there that he's not an average shot. That's not true. Uh, he's a very good shot. He um, has become disillusioned with uh, capitalism and democracy. Uh, he starts trying to learn Russia, uh, Russian, and he is ordering communist magazines coming to his uh, camp in Texas. Uh, he will try to leave the United States, and in 1960, he uh, moves to the Soviet Union. And he meets with Soviet leaders, and he says, uh, I renounce my U.S. citizenship. I want to stay here permanently. Uh, they're not trusting him, right? If you're a Russian uh, leader, would you believe this American soldier uh, is really disillusioned with American life? They think he may be some kind of spy. They say you can stay for a little bit, but that's it. He ends up marrying a Russian woman, uh, but they uh, are going to kick him out. Uh, at that point, he is... He feels he's out of options, and he slits his wrist and tries to kill himself. He's found in a bathtub in Russia, uh, and recognizing his passion then, the Russian officials allow him to stay. He stays until 1962, but he's very disappointed in the way that he thought that he'd be living very well off. He does not have a good lifestyle. He thought that he would be seen as valuable. He's not, uh, and he starts reading about Castro and Cuba, what we talked about with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and he thinks, well, maybe that's the wave of the future. It's not Russian communism, but Cuba communism that is the wave of the future. So he decides to move back to the United States uh, in 1962, and he lives in New Orleans. Uh, while living in New Orleans, he uh, buys this rifle for $19 by mail. Uh, he buys this rifle uh, and he finds also living in New Orleans at the time is a guy by the name of Governor Walker uh, and we're gonna borrow Mrs. G for a moment uh, as Governor Walker can you get Mrs. G in there? thank you uh, he is mad that Governor Walker had uh, planned the Bay of Pigs invasion so he wants to kill Governor Walker he goes to Governor Walker's uh, house one night and he sees Governor Walker on his front window, typing away on his typewriter. Right, there's no computers yet, typewriter. He gets his gun, he aims and fires a shot at Governor Walker's head, just as Governor Walker leans back on his chair to take a break from the typewriter, and the bullet goes right by his face. Well, just misses, lucky. yes, he got lucky, just misses Governor Walker. Uh, thank you, Mrs. G. Uh, at that point, Oswald realizes that he, people are going to start looking for him, so he and his wife move away from New Orleans uh, and move to Texas. So now he's living in Texas and it's 1963. He works at a bookstore. Let me get to the fit next picture here. This building right here. He works here. Mm -hmm. His job is a very uh, menial task. He's basically in charge of all the textbooks that come to uh, the, this building, and then he distributes it around the, the state. So it's not really a, an exciting job. Uh, he finds out that Kennedy's motorcade is going to go right by the bookstore. This is where the motorcade is going to go driving by, right where he works. He's mad at Kennedy because he feels that Kennedy tried to kill Castro with the Bay of Pigs. He even started a committee called the Fair Play for Cuba Committee. How many people do you think are in the committee? Not a lot. Including Oswald? One. One, correct. One, including Oswald uh, in this committee. Uh, regardless, 
uh, he thinks that he can uh, kill Kennedy uh, as a way to showcase a, uh, that communism is the way of the future. He thinks that this will be a ticket for him to maybe go into Cuba and live in Cuba. Uh, so on the night, or I'm sorry, on the, on the morning of the assassination, he takes his life savings, about $300, and he leaves it on the desk. He takes off his wedding ring, and he leaves that on the, on the desk. He uh, puts his gun in a brown paper bag. I'm sorry, I don't have the bag. But he put, and he's walking to a car where his uh, co-worker is going to drive him to work. And the co-worker says, what's in the bag, Lee? And he says, curtain rods. That he's going to decorate his apartment with curtain rods over the weekend. Uh, they did not find curtain rods at the assassin or at the sixth floor, but they did find a gun about that size. Uh, so on the morning of the assassination, he uh, sets up a sniper's nest. His fingerprints are all over the sixth floor window. Uh, area where he works, where he's moving boxes. He's got fingerprints all over that. And he built up boxes to kind of shield himself from the rest of the crowd, like any other worker. Uh, the workers are mainly going to leave the building to watch as the president goes by. Uh, Oswald stays behind, and again, he's on the sixth floor, so he's right here. Uh, we're going to watch the Zapruder film. This is a man uh, named Abraham Zapruder who films the assassination. He doesn't film, he's not planning on it being an assassination, he just happens to be there uh, to capture the presidential motorcade. Uh, but we have this film, we have this footage. So Oswald is going to take, the first shot is going to miss, it's going to hit this tree right here. The second shot is going to be hard for us to see, we're going to see Kennedy react to it, but it's hard for us to see because where Abraham Zapruder is standing, the, the Stemmons freeway sign is blocking his view. So you're not gonna see Kennedy for a moment, but we'll watch that. And then the third shot is gonna be the, that Oswald shoots is gonna be the headshot, and that's where, that's where Kennedy's gonna be killed. It's gonna be a hard video to watch. Um, just a reminder that this is human life. Uh, we may get caught up in the analytics of it and, and looking at it to determine uh, if there's a conspiracy or anything like that. Uh, I want to make sure that we're recognizing, you know, that Kennedy was in fact killed on that day. So uh, I'm going to point some things out as we watch. Uh, it is a uh, this is slow motion. There is no sound in the film in 1963 uh, that, that he uh, showcases. We're going to see that the first shot misses. Uh, the first shot. Not a longer shot. We'll get that. So the first shot misses. Kennedy's going to stop waving at that point, and that's where we know that he's. Uh, why does that hurt? All right. So Kennedy stops waving at that moment. Uh, that's the first shot. So remember, the first shot hit the tree, didn't hit Kennedy. Uh, you're going to see the second shot here. Oz, or, um, Governor Connolly is in the car as well. It's going to hit Kennedy and Connolly at the same time. It hits him. So the first, the second shot is going through Kennedy. Uh huh. Goes through Kennedy's neck. Goes through Connolly, the governor of Texas, and comes out Connolly. People call this the magic bullet because it's one bullet that goes through and creates seven wounds. So the conspiracy that really people start talking about is like, no way could one shot do all this. But when we look at where they're lined up. And there's a video that my students are going to watch, computer edited, uh, animated, that really highlights this and how it, it's perfectly lined up. It has to hit Connolly. So the bullet's going to hit Kennedy in the back. It's going to come up and come out of Kennedy in the throat. And you can see Kennedy's arms like this. This is called a Thorburn position. It's a spinal cord injury where his, he's not going like this, right? He's not grabbing his throat. He's like that. He's, his arms are seized together. You see Jackie Kennedy, his wife is trying to, like, what's wrong, pull his arms, and she can't move his arms uh, at that moment. Governor Connolly, so the bullet has come out of Kennedy. At this point, it hit Gov the, uh, it nicks Kennedy's spinal cord, and it's coming out of Kennedy. The bullet is tumbling 
And we know this for a fact because it hits Connolly, the bullet hits his back end to end. So the bullet's not going through Connolly straight, the bullet is going through Connolly like that because Connolly has a wound like this on the back. Oh, Connolly, it wasn't like a circle bullet? Correct. Oh. Well, it is a circle, but it's, but the bullet, like if, it, if this is the bone, uh -huh. as it's going through Kennedy, it hits the bone and it starts tumbling. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? So the, the bullet goes through Connolly end to end. And when it goes through, uh, Connolly lives, by the way, he, he yeah. survives all this. Goes through Connolly's back, comes out Connolly's front, uh -huh. goes through Connolly's wrist, because the way Connolly was turned, he heard the shot, and then it lands and goes through, uh, it's found in Connolly's leg. So one bullet, seven wounds. Oh. And that's why people are like, no way. Right? But it ma all matches up in a straight line. Uh, it doesn't move around, it doesn't zigzag, as some people suggest. Uh, when you look at where Kennedy's sitting, where Connolly's sitting, uh, it's, it's a direct line. The third shot, that Oswald does, and this is the one that's gonna be graphic, is gonna be the final shot, the head shot. This is the one that is gonna hit Kennedy in the head. He uh, will move forward a, a little bit, and then he moves back and to the left. If you're uncomfortable with this, uh, skip ahead. Don't watch this scene uh, if you don't wanna see it, because it is graphic. Um, so here is the third and final shot. And as you saw there, um, Kennedy went back and to the left. Uh, so the suggestion by many people in conspiracy world think that the shot must have come from the front right, with a place called the Grassy Knoll, and then it hits Kennedy in the front and because he goes back and to the left. But reality is he has moved forward six inches and it, sadly, again, we're talking human life, but the explosion has pushed him back and to the left. And that's why after he moves forward, he moves back and to the left. Uh, so afterwards, what the question next is, what happens to Oswald? Oswald uh, leaves the bookstore 90 seconds later after the shooting. The three bullet cartridges are sitting there by the, uh, the sniper's nest in the sixth floor. He hides the gun, runs down the six flights of stairs, uh, and escapes. About, that was at 12.30. At about 12.45, they, the police seal the bookstore, and they take a roll, and they say what employees are missing. The only one missing is Lee Harvey Oswald. The police send out a uh, description of what Oswald looks like, uh, and they put out a message to all police officers to be on alert for Oswald. Oswald uh, had uh, $13 in his pocket. That was uh, mainly for, the thought is that he was going to use that to buy a, a bus ticket to go to Mexico City so he could get out of the United States, go to Mexico, and from Mexico, get to Cuba, is the theory. But in the panic, he decides to uh, go get a handgun. Uh, so he goes to get a handgun, and uh, as he's walking out of his apartment, uh, a police officer by the name of J.E. Tippett sees him, sees it fits the description, sees everybody kind of running into the city of Dallas, and this one strange dude is going back to his apartment. And he fits the description. So he goes to question Oswald, Oswald pulls out his gun and shoots him, kills Officer Tippett. Then Oswald decides to go back into the city to kind of maybe hide out in Dallas. Uh, he decides to go to a movie theater. He, uh, in the movie theater, he get, goes and he's sit, sitting in the back row. As he's sitting in the back row, uh, he did, uh, I'm sorry, a shoe salesman next door saw him go into the movie theater. Again, the president has just been shot. Hey, let's go see a movie. <laughs> like, who's going to the movies at that moment by themselves? And he's fitting the description that's out there. So the shoe salesman calls the police and says, hey, this dude just went into the theater. Um, they, I think, and he's, he fits the description of what you're looking for. So the police show up and, the, and they see Oswald sitting alone in the back row. 
the police on both sides they go on both sides of the aisle and they start moving in to Oswald to get him. Uh, as the police are going in to get him, Oswald stands up at the last moment, says, this is it. Punches the police officer, grabs his gun, pulls the trigger as the police officer is wrestling with him and the police officer is ab able to grab the gun with his hand and that fatty piece of skin between your thumb and your finger, the gun, uh, the, the pin of the gun, trigger the trigger pinches his hand and the gun doesn't go off because it landed right there. Yeah. If not, it would have killed the police officer. At that point, um, the police officer punches Oswald. Oswald claims, I am not resisting arrest. I am not resisting arrest. I'm not, after you punch the police officer, you're trying to, yeah. oh, okay. you're not resisting arrest. Uh, and he is taken to the Dallas station. Uh, as he's taken there, Kennedy has been officially announced that he has died. Uh, they're going to take Kennedy's body uh, on Air Force One and uh, fly him back to Washington, D.C. They actually take him to Bethesda, Maryland to do an autopsy and they check, uh, you know, looking at the path of the bullets and all that stuff. So um, Oswald, the last thing with Oswald is on Sunday, they're going to move him from a, the state facility of Texas to a federal facility. And as they're moving him, a guy by the name of Jack Ruby shoots Oswald and kills him on live television. Oh. Yes. So Oswald dies Sunday. Now, Jack Ruby uh, kills him and he owned a strip bar. Great. Great. Yay. Kiss you. Uh, he owns a strip bar and that strip bar was visited by many mafia people and that's where there was there's some conspiracy that perhaps the mafia did it uh, and that Ruby is kind of the hitman to take out Oswald the problem is does somebody then have to take out Ruby does someone have to take out the guy who took out Ruby where does that end and when you hear about who Ruby was he was not the classic like, hitman guy who was very quiet and disappears into the night. Ruby was this loud, obnoxious dude who wanted to be famous. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was shocked that he was going to jail for this. He's like, for what? I did everybody a favor. I killed the bad guy. Um, he, why he kills Oswald, he said, for two reasons. He wanted to show America that not all Texans were bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, and second, he said that because he did not want to see Jackie Kennedy have to take the stand. Jackie Kennedy would have been seen as a witness to the assassination that maybe she would have to recall what she knew or what she remembered so uh, he figured if there's no trial then Jackie wouldn't have to take the stand uh, so uh, but Oswald dying before there's a trial leads to that all this conspiracy stuff uh, and if you play around and investigate there are some people who think that it's the FBI who kills Oswald some people think the CIA kills Oswald. Um, some people think that it was Russia or China, or not, not China, uh, Cuba uh, that killed Oswald. Um, you know, that there's a lot of conspiracies out there. But the, it all points to, all the evidence points to him. Um, now maybe in some future we'll find out that he could have worked for the CIA or something along those lines, but there's no evidence at all that shows that, that he was working for them, like with the explicit instructions to kill Kennedy. Mm -hmm. um, but people want a conspiracy, and I, I've heard the, a good example uh, is, and I'll leave you with this, is the, um, the conspiracy. When you think of like Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust, you have the greatest crime against humanity, and you got the most evil person who ever lived, right? So it kind of balances on a scale. Mm -hmm. When Kennedy dies, and then we think about what's going to happen next with the Vietnam War and the hippies and the civil rights movement goes violent and there's protests and uh, ugliness that's going on. That people kind of look at like, well, what happened? And they kind of use that moment of Kennedy's assassination as when things changed in this country. So when you say Hitler, Holocaust, it balances out on a scale. But when you say Kennedy's death, and some 26-year-old dude who buys a rifle in the mail, it doesn't balance, it doesn't feel right. But if you say,
the whole world changed and there must have been this massive conspiracy. That's why I think people want the conspiracy because it balances it out. So if you have any more questions on the conspiracy, tune into to our Zoom lesson uh, or email me that. All right, thank you, Katie.